be wearing a condom because I have a dirty mind. What's going on YouTubers? It's the kid here from the Kids Corner and today I'm going to be bringing you a review of the Sony SLT A55 DSLT or DSLR uh, camera. So let's just jump right into this and let's not uh, waste any of your time. The Sony A55 may look like a traditional SLR from the outside but inside this compact package is a totally new approach. It sits somewhere in the middle of Sony's DSLR range and its main competition is the hybrid cameras such as the Nex5 and the Lumix DMC-G2. The A55 comes in body only and in kit form with the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. I purchased the A55 kit on sonystyle.com for $850. The A55 is a 16.2 megapixel model that uses the same sensor as the Sony Nex5 and Nex3. The first cameras in Sony's next interchangeable lens compact range, while the A55 uses a larger APS-C CMOS sensor. With its innovative translucent mirror technology, the A55 distorts the line between traditional DSLRs and newer interchangeable lens cameras. Although it feels, looks, and handles like a traditional DSLR, its translucent mirror design offers a new approach at photography. It technically doesn't have a mirror inside, but a semi-transparent one that lets 70% of the light through to the main sensor, while the rest is bounced up to a phase detection autofocus sensor. This allows the camera to take a picture with no moving mirror. This means you get continuous autofocus, both when snapping moving subjects and shooting video. In practice, the full-time autofocus and lack of moving parts means that the A55 is incredibly fast, capturing up to 10 frames per second. The high speed shooting mode doesn't allow you to adjust exposure, but dropping the frame rate to a still credible 6 frames per second means that you can take charge of these settings. This overpowers its DSLR competition price range which has around 3.5 to 4 frames per second. The A55 is leading in its class. The fixed mirror means the camera is relatively small, 23% smaller and 26% lighter than the Sony Alpha DSLR A550 to be specific. It's very light but with a solid feel and comfortable rubberized grip, though it is somewhat plasticky but this doesn't concern me about build quality. The lack of moving mirror also means that the viewfinder is electronic rather than optical. This advantage of the EVF or electronic viewfinder is that you can preview your settings and see 100% of the frame. Sony's TrueFinder EVF also offers on-screen goodies including focus point magnification, a histogram, and a digital spirit level. The 1.44 million dot EVF is clear and bright, and the on-screen display looks like a video game, which I admit I found pretty cool. I can notice the difference between the electronic and an optical viewfinder, but I'm impartial about both. Basically, they do their job and do it well. The rotating screen will let you hold the camera at all crazy angles you want, and still allow you to see what you're doing. Moving the camera away from your eye will automatically switch between the EVF and the live view on the screen, though you can toggle the view via a button if you feel like. The camera's fold-out screen has a new design with a fully articulating pivot, meaning you can see the 3-inch 16x9 format LCD from either side as well from straight up and down. It's super handy for shooting the camera held high or down low, and I especially like shooting low to the ground, so the articulating screen was a must in my camera decision. The A55 includes a GPS module. This tags your photos with the location of where they were taken, so you can place them on Google Maps. It's a fun feature if you travel and like to geotag your pictures. I have to admit the GPS function works beautifully. I even found that it finds signals inside my house where my Garmin car GPS does not. The A55 offers Sony Sweep Panorama, which let you take extra wide photos by slowly panning the camera across the scene in one movement. Note that you must move very slow for the camera to accurately shoot the sweep. At times you feel rushed to get everything in the picture. I found it to be hit or miss to really capture what you want in the panorama mode. You can also pop these pictures up to 3D quality, although the 3D mode isn't very forgiving. 
If your sweeping movement isn't smooth enough, the finished picture is ruined. 3D snaps can be viewed on a 3D capable television via the HDMI input and a v um, HDMI cable. The continuous autofocus is impressively quick, but in some situations, the constant refocusing is too much. You can press the shutter button halfway to lock the focus, but I found that the camera would often start hunting around again. That's also a problem when shooting video, as both you and the subject are moving, leading to focus jumping around. Using my 35mm focus lens at f1.8, shooting pictures was beautiful. I like the manual control when focusing, so I don't really rely on the autofocus too much. I have to say, when in good light or outside, the focusing is quick enough to capture the moment. I have shots of my puppy running from me at the, across the yard, and with the kit lens and the 35mm lens, I had no problem tracking him. Video is shot at 1080i high def and is recorded in an AVC HD or MPEG-4 format. I prefer MPEG-4 because it allows you to capture time uh, at a longer duration, though the camera will shut down after 29 or minutes or so minutes to cool down. I have not verified this, but is what Sony claims. A dedicated movie button puts re video recording right at your fingertips. There is also a mic input for serious filmmakers as the built-in stereo mic tends to pick up sounds of the focusing lens. Sony's proprietary hot shoe mount isn't ideal because it forces you to buy a Sony compatible accessory or finding a third party shoe adapter. I originally purchased a stereo external microphone to mount onto this uh, proprietary shoe mount and learned the hard way that it still picks up the lens focusing noise. Both video and stills are excellent. Noise performance in low light is particularly strong and colors are very rich. The bracketing modes also do a top job of combining multiple frames to bring out extra detail or improve on low light shots. I like the placement of the D-range button myself. I also like that Sony has come to grips that everyone doesn't appreciate using their overpriced memory sticks and now is allowing you to use uh, SD standard uh, cards. Kudos to Sony that they're letting me use my existing SD cards. In conclusion, for your money, you'll get a fast, usable, and versatile camera whether you choose the Sony Alpha SLT A55 or its little brother, the SLT A33. Sony may have taken the risk in trying something different with this camera, but it's got plenty right. That is why I have chosen the A55 for my main daily camera. I have now joined the Sony bandwagon. Thanks for watching.